He said, everybody, it's the coolest legendary, it's the cool, the DJ, the weather, it's not all about me, it's about MV Online. Check it out. For anybody that doesn't know, could you tell them how you got into the DJing game? How I got involved into DJing is a mixture of different things. Growing up in Colonial Projects behind the polo grounds in Harlem, um, that's where I grew up at, I was being amazed by my man by the name of Otis that was in the project. They had a, a massive sound system, you know, and at that time it was the state of the art, but, you know, you can go under his window on the second floor and look up in his window and, you know, you see the speakers mounting up on the wall, you see the reel to reel. I mean, you know, you little kid, you be like amazed at this. Besides that, at home, on the behalf of my brother, my older brother, he had a large record collection, so I always learned a little bit of everything as far as music concerned. Number one, I come from a Caribbean background, Antigua, West Indies. So in the household, it's not only listening to what you heard on radio, um, what you heard in the streets, but also in the house, I heard a lot of Calypso, Merengue, Soca, and my brother used to collect a lot of music at that time. You know, some Motown, some soul, some funk, some Caribbean, some Latin, you know, so I was open-minded, and I think that's what led me into being influenced with music. I went to school up in the Bronx called Dewey Clinton High School. During the time I was going to that school, and I don't have no shame in giving this away, talking about in the 70s, in the mid-70s, I was able to go sneak downtown, and at that time it was the disco era, when they were playing the dance disco R&B. And I would listen to various DJs like Plummer, PDJ Jones, rest in peace, Grandmaster Flowers. That's where Flash got the Grandmaster from. Guy named Charisma, rest in peace, the Together Brothers. But even though I'll go sneaking down there on a Thursday and Friday, on a Saturday from learning about who this guy was from going to school with the guys in um, Clinton High School in the Bronx, they used to always talk about it. Guy by the name of Herc, Herc, Herc. So I used to go and check out him. And um, by learning the styles that they were playing downtown, the styles that Herc was playing, and by me, me, me um, being musically inclined by, you know, what I see in the neighborhood, encouraged me that when I went to went away to college for a year and a half, I got a scholarship, I used to play ball. I took up communication engineering, and I got my third class license for radio. Now when I come back, after a year and a half, you got a whole new slew of people. You got Flash, you got AJ, you got the, um, the L Brothers that feature the youngest who was Grand Wizard Theodore. There's a, a whole lot of people in the Bronx. So that encouraged me to go ahead and start, you know, saving up my money, working in the garment district, buy my pieces of equipment little by little, turntable here, turntable there, mixer, every weekend. After payday, go to the record store, pick it up, all the latest records. And by me listening to them and watching them, taught me how to practice. Nobody taught me. I taught by looking, watching. And I taught myself. And you're on the radio, and then one minute, then, you know, one day you wasn't on that radio station. And then you went to High 97, and then one day you wasn't on there. And you just had, you seemed like you always had a humble attitude about it. I just wanted you to share, like, um, I guess people always wanted to know, like, how did you feel? Like, how did you get told? Or how did you, did you feel like, like, you know, like, like they were just moving you to the side? One thing I have learned as far as when I got involved with the business, you don't own what you get involved with. Only that, you don't last there forever. Only very few that you see, like, a Reggie Miller with his whole entire life at the Indiana Pacers, you know, but, I'm just using it as an excuse. You know, or even like you see Kobe to this day still with the Lakers. You gotta understand, and this is what a gentleman taught me a long time ago. He said, man, there's something you gotta learn, you gotta face in life. Change. Whatever it is, do not last the same forever. You gotta learn to adapt to change. You gotta learn to adapt where, you know, you can't too, be too comfortable with where you live at, where you be at, or what you do. So, by uh, me getting involved with Kiss that family, I was always going to consider my home. After 11 years, and I saw the machine, when I say the machine, I'm talking about corporate America, 
start making their moves and shaking the move here and there. I have to learn to adapt to that because they they call the shots, you know. Um, when they was closing out Kiss FM for what the format we was doing, and the company that owned Hot 97 brought Kiss FM, they took it upon themselves to come after Wendy Williams and I to come over from Kiss over to Hot. Now, that's a blessing because they could have considered like, okay, your time is up. But they felt my time wasn't up, so they brought me over there. And then I did seven years at, at Hot. Um, there were some differences I had at my last year at Hot. So I pulled out for about maybe a good three months. And then I reconsidered, I went back to Kiss because they, they said, you want to come back. I did a year there and then afterwards, I had an offer to go to power. So sometimes you got to learn to take it upon yourself to um, maintain your, your strategy, maintain your position, maintain your sense of business, and um, learn to adapt because you don't own none of this. Everybody right now. Mm -hmm. The reason why you saw why I was fading away for being a face for the group because when it came to the recording, making music, making records, making songs, it wasn't the DJ that you heard. You heard the MC, which later become rappers. Still MCs out there. So the same thing at one point when you heard Eric B for President by Eric B and Rock Hill, you heard more about Eric B, but everybody thought Eric B was the one rhyming. No, it was Rock Hill. So what had happened that the record company started learning how to push forward the person who actually rapping on the, on the records and push their profile more. The DJ right along with them, but you need to acknowledge more at the MC. That's why when you heard Grandmaster Flash and Fury 5, Flash got that platform, but you need to acknowledge the MCs. And who came out more? Melly Mel. Same thing with all these other groups. You always heard the DJ name along. The only very few groups that you saw, they kept it a balance. Like when you heard Gangstar. Yes. Here it is. They kept it a balance. You know, that's how it's supposed to be side to side. But it was always the company that would learn how to push forth the MC. Now, what happened came later on is a phase that came along, was called the mixtapes. How the mixtapes came along, big up to my man world famous Brucey e. B. And may he rest in peace who just passed away, my man Star Child. They were the first two that start doing the mixtapes. Brucey e. B emerged at the rooftop, Star Child emerged at the fever. Who the person that came back under them because he was making a name for himself and started taking it to the next level was Kid Capri. After Kid Capri, you know, you got you named them all. Ron G, Triple C, D Demo, but wow, I mean, that's the that's, this is wrong. So now from the street value, the title mixtape became synonymous. It really became a big game, a brand. And that's why you saw DJs on radio took that like a funk master flex and call it the mixtape. Now, I remember in the past, I did a couple of what you call compilation albums. The first time I did was song for song, it interact in between my son and I. But then when I heard how everybody wanted to hear the same thing what I did on the radio, so I made it sound like the radio. Flex took the title mixtape and called it the tape. The radio stations later on start seeing how popular the cats that was doing mixtapes was in the street. They start picking them up. Clue, K Slade, MV. So now that's what became. But what really got a little ugly that the DJs, we see how all the rappers, MCs, who they are, want to be on their mixtape. So they said, okay, no problem. You gotta take care of me. Mm -hmm. Some of them felt like, okay, but others felt like, nah. So you took a person like who I respect, a 50 Cent, 
He said, guess what? I don't need no DJ. I do my own mixtape. I'm not a DJ, but I'm gonna put out my own, my own music. Because there are some DJs later on, sad to say that it's supposed to be a mixtape, but they, when you heard them, it wasn't really mixing. It was just throwing stuff on. Hollering on the mic and throwing stuff on. So, here it is that 50 took that blueprint, say I can do this shit my damn self. I can hire on the mic myself and put my own stuff out. And then before you know that, that blueprint for rappers and MCs, everybody far behind that.